Welcome to Slovakia Ring. The Slovakia Ring, around six kilometers in length, with six left and five right-hand corners, one chicane and seven straights. The start-finish straight is 900 meters long and 20 meters wide. It's the third stop on this year's FIA European Truck Racing Championship calendar. It has a very fast corners, which are quite difficult. Uh, I mean, the second corner is uh, flat out, it's 160, but it's not an easy corner, you know. I mean, you make a small mistake and you are off and you are in, in very high the speed. There is always a lot of interest in race trucks, and this time many Slovakian fans came from the capital, Bratislava, which is around 40 kilometers away. The championship standings ahead of the weekend look like this. Jochen Hahn, last year's champion, leads on 94 points, followed by Antonio Albafetti and Norbert Kisch. The three big masters of track racing have built the top three ahead of the weekend. Adam Lachko has fallen behind on sixth after his catastrophic weekend at the Hungara Ring. Ollie James is 12. He's the man leading the Grammar Cup. Jochen Hahn has won 50% of the races so far. This gives the five times champion a 23-point lead over longtime rival Antonio Albafetti. Next to Hahn and Albafetti, Norbert Kish would like to add another victory after winning three times at the Slovakia Ring in the past two years. The Hungarian aims to decrease that 31-point gap. Johan Antonio is very, very strong always in every race weekend. You know, no, no matter where we are, these are the guys that you have to have to take into account. You know, because this, for sure they will be up for the for the podium positions and for the wins. So, yeah, it's a, it's a strong strong field. I think, uh, as as I said, it's everything very close, so everyone can be can be fighting for for the top three, you know. So just see just see what happens and uh, keep the, the the cool down, you know. Take it easy and uh, take points. Here, everyone is at the same level. I would even say four, five, six drivers are at the same level, not just three. We need to be careful and need to push for front rows or at least good positions in qualifying. We can't make any mistakes. The German in his Eveco has done a nearly perfect job this season, winning three out of four Super Poles. And here at the Slovakia ring, he's the benchmark driver with three tenths of a second advantage over Norbert Kisch. Once again, Jochen Hahn is looking very hard to stop. Yesterday, it took us quite some time to find the right setup. Honestly, too long. It was very helpful to have so much driving time. We made a big change for the two free practice sessions with a big impact, something that hasn't worked before, and paf, the car felt like a go-kart. Then, of course, you also have pressure because you know that the truck can do it. It's up to me now. In the start grid of the first race, the reigning champion Jochen Hahn is on pole position. And next to Jochen Hahn on the front row, not unexpectedly, Norbert Kirsch, second fastest, three tenths of a second slower. It's not a strong suit at the start, so usually I have to defend right away after the start. So, yeah, you know, I try to do my best. I try to concentrate on the lights, catch the lights. Hopefully better than anyone else, anyone else, and then and then make the acceleration, and then see what happens. You know, it's on the second row: Steffi Halm and Adam Lachko, also two possible winners. Which, being in the top three of the championship, means they also start as the favourites. <laughs> With temperatures of 35 degrees and more than 50 degrees on the track, the start of the first race. Jochen Hahn makes a good start. Norbert Kish drops back into the pack, though. Steffi Halm, Adam Lachko, Sasha Lentz and Antonio Albafetti all move ahead of him. Kish is sixth at Turn 1. On board, the Hungarian's truck looking back at René Reinert in the blue rig and Andre Kurzim in the yellow and white Iveco. Kurzim goes round the outside of Reinert. On board of Reinert now. He keeps his line as Kurzim goes on the attack. He tries to find a way past Kish. But as he tries, there's contact between Kurzim and Reinert. 
Kurzim goes off into the gravel. And this is how it looked from behind. Looking back from Kishi's truck, Kurzim turns into the corner, contact between the two, and off he goes. Kurzim buried in the gravel, there's a red flag. The race is stopped, and all the trucks need to return to the start and finish line. Andre had a good start. He came from the back from P10, was already next to me at the first corner, and then pushed further forward. For a short time, he was ahead of me. If he'd stayed there, nothing would have happened, but he drove to the left. He wanted to take the corner from the outside, and it's a quick right-hander. I stayed on my line. He suddenly drove to the inside, touched me, and then spun in front of me. But the race was interrupted, and after a couple of corners, we got the red flag. It was 100% his fault. That's very clear. Going back to the pits, we had high brake temperatures on the rear, which then inflamed due to dust and dirt. And that's what it looks like when you have to drive to the pits with overheated brakes after about four kilometers. Again, a big disappointment for Andre Kurzim and the Don't Touch Racing team. After an interruption of around 20 minutes, the restart without Andre Kurzim, but with the original grid formation. Again at the front, it's Jochen Hahn on the inside line. Steffi Harm rounds next to him. Antonio Albertetti third, and Norbert Kirsch makes an even worse start this time. He has to defend himself again after an attack from Rene Reinert. Exactly where Reinert and Kurzim touched each other before, Kish wins the battle over Reinert. But also with consequences for the Hungarian in his Mercedes-Benz truck from Team Tank Pool Fierenc Fansig. Reinert is still crawling all over the back of him. In the lead is Steffi Halm, followed by Hahn, Albafetti and Lachko. Then it's Kish with a small gap. Jochen Hahn still looking for a way past Steffi Halm. Hahn puts his German colleague under huge pressure and then makes his move for the race lead. On the inside line, Jochen Hahn takes over the lead. Steffi Halm falls back to second, but there's drama behind. Kish and Jamie Anderson get all crossed up. At the start, I think Rene hit me from the back. And that caused me a puncture on the on the right outside tire on the back. So yeah, that that sealed my race because there is only three left turns on the circuit, but those three left turns were really really slow. So everybody was overtaking me and and, and getting close to me. So I even had to fight for that that uh, sixth position in the end. But then Rene got the penalty for overspeeding or something, and then um, I ended up fifth. So you know, not the best race. On board with Adam Lachko, chasing after Antonio Albafetti, who goes out wide and sideways. The door opens, and Lachko charges through to gain a place. It's a frustrated Antonio Albafetti post-race. I am uh, disappointed, you know, because, as I told you before, uh, the, the most important is to take points each race, you know. So now we have uh, zero, so... <laughs> It makes a little bit uh, difficult, the, the championship, you know. Up front, Jochen Hahn leads, the gap increasing over Steffi Halm, who comes home under pressure from Adam Lachko. The two run nose to tail. And Norbert Kish, he's fighting for points, even with tyre damage. He's sixth, fighting against Louis Rafenko, the second driver of Team Truck Sport Lutz now. At the flag, Jochen Hahn claims another victory, with a gap of 3.6 seconds over Steffi Hahn, who sees the chequered flag just 15 thousandths ahead of Adam Lachko. There's huge excitement from Team Hahn Racing, and the five times European champion is on the top step of the podium once again. And Jochen Hahn knows that he has to thank Steffi Hahn for a big part of that success. Last year, Norbert outsmarted us in the first corner. We fought for the win. He came from fifth and just overtook on the inside. That's something I really wanted to avoid this time. In my opinion, it's not just my win, but a win that we both fought for. 
the result of the first race at the Slovakia ring. After a 10 second penalty, Rene Reinert drops to eighth place and will therefore start from pole for race two. Only 10 trucks are in the points, so Dominic Orsini, the French gentleman racer, 11th, misses out. And while the trucks are being prepared in between races one and two, they get new brakes or some are just being cleaned, the fans have time to discover many different activities and to have some fun. And sometimes, as a small VIP fan, you even have the chance to go to the start grid. On the best position for race two is the man in the blue Iveco truck, Rene Reiner. I'm not really sure how I feel. Motivated to be on the front row, but disappointed to lose seven points in that first race. Next to Rene Reiner is Oli James, the Brit from the Bagheera team, the leader of the Grammar Truck Cup. Luis Rafenko, the Spaniard, is on the second row, starting third, and we haven't seen him too often at the front of the grid. Next to him is Norbert Kish in the tactical Fierence Fancy truck. The start from the camera of Ollie James, who gets a visit from Sasha Lentz. Lentz pushes his way through from the third row of the grid, finds a gap and claims it. René Reinert leads, followed by Lentz, who's had a mega start, with Adam Lachko, who also started from the third row, moving ahead of James down at the first corner. He's in a battle with Steffi Halm and Norbert Kisch. The Czech is sixth during the first lap, but looking very strong is Rafenko, who is defending third place. On lap two, Reinert makes a mistake. Lentz uses this to his advantage and goes ahead on the inside, exactly as Steffi Halm overtakes Rafenko. Jochen Hahn is on the far outside under attack from Jamie Anderson. Still on lap two, the view from Norbert Kish's truck. Steffi Halm attacks Rene Reinert, touches the blue rig. Reinert gets sideways, slides off the road. But he doesn't want to give up his place in the Hungarian and clatters back onto the circuit. I unfortunately touched another truck while overtaking. Uh, it was Rene, and that led to him destroying the wheel rim and resulting in a flat tyre. I just apologised to him, but of course that doesn't make things better for him at this moment. The top three at the end of lap two, Lentz, Halm and Kish. While Adam Lachko fights with Louis Rafenko. Ahead is Norbert Kish. Rafuenko is on the inside, touching Lachko and getting all sideways and spinning. He disappears in a huge dust cloud. Kurzim, Albafetti and James need to avoid a crash. They have to drive through the gravel, which is especially hard for Albafetti. It was a lot of dust, you know, so Kurzim and me didn't know where to go. We thought, OK, better to go outside because Maybe Luis truck is in the middle of the of the of the corner, you know. So we go off through the gravel, and Kursim uh, start to throw me some stones. The windshield looks like coming out of a James Bond film. On the last lap, Lachko is determined to gain a podium finish, and he attacks Norbert Kish, overtaking on the inside of turn three in his very battered truck. Lachko moves ahead. Sasha Lentz takes the chequered flag, a race winner, followed by Steffi Halm with Adam Lachko in third place. There's great excitement in the team of Sasha Lentz in the pit lane, and of course for the driver himself in Park Ferme. Most excited, perhaps, is Sasha's daughter, Kate. Daddy Sasha is her hero. And who is able to present the trophy? Well, Kate claims it for herself. And it looks like she's enjoying joining her father on the podium. A great reception for the popular Sasha Lentz.
I was second at the first corner. René made a mistake on the first lap and I used that to my advantage. Afterwards, I drove at my own pace and I saw that Steffi was really close at some corners. In others, she lost out uh, and I got the message over the radio that I was increasing my gap so I had to stay calm, to concentrate like in qualifying. And it was enough in the end, which makes me very happy. A second victory of the season for Sasha Lentz after his win in the second race in Budapest. Behind him, Steffi Halm and Adam Lachko. Kiss and Hahn only 4th and 5th, Alba 38th after some bad luck, and Ollie James 12th, leading the Grammar Cup. Brand new this season, the FIA ETRC official game. This is where new fantastic simulations blur lines of reality a game that enables the players to be part of the races with a five-ton truck. The players of the FIA European Truck Racing Championship game can choose the official trucks of the 2018 season. Nearly all of the ETRC tracks are to be driven close to the original. All teams and drivers are included. With five single-player and five multiplayer modes, the FIA European Truck Racing Championship offers a great new possibility for fans of racing games. With dynamic weather conditions, different physics and inactivity depending on each truck, manual control of brakes and water cooling, everything is included for the players. The conditions are only slightly cooler on Sunday. The pole sitter for the third race is Jochen Hahn, the man in the Iveco truck securing a fifth pole position out of six opportunities this year. Next to him again is Norbert Kisch followed on row two by René Reinert and Adam Lachko. The Czech fourth, even though he was third fastest in the qualifying session, but due to wrong information of the track marshals regarding a crossing of the corner marker, the results of the second qualifying and the Super Pole session on Sunday were merged following a consultation with the officials and confirmed by the stewards. That's why Reinert is third. Everyone is perhaps with a different opinion. The start is always impressive at the Slovakia ring, with the straight being 20 metres wide. Enough space for a couple of trucks. Jochen Hahn at the front. He's looking for the ideal line for the first corner. Behind him, René Reinert and Adam Lachko. While Norbert Kisch had issues with the acceleration of his Mercedes-Benz engine, and it's only fifth place for him. Jochen Hahn pulls clear while the rest of the field battles over the opening lap. At the rear of the field is Fabio Cittignola, the rookie in number 24, battling with Luis Rafenko. Looking back from Steffi Halmstruck, she's up to third, and Norbert Kirsch is looking for a way by. Norbert Kirsch attacks Adam Lachko. They're side by side. Kirsch on the inside. Three German drivers make their way in three Italian built trucks at the Slovakia ring. Reinert and Harm are under pressure from Natsko and Kish, who are some of the best truck racing drivers in Europe. Great racing going on as Reinert and Harm squabble amongst themselves. Reinert just hangs on to the place, Steffi Halm behind as Jochen Harm builds the lead up front. Adam Lachko, the 2017 champion, isn't going to settle for fourth. He attacks Steffi Halm. But he risks too much, runs wide and goes onto the grass. Now he's under attack from Norbert Kish. In this corner, I try past the Steffi and uh, we have small contact with the Steffi because Steffi is uh, very fast there and he pushed me a little bit, but it's a uh, normal racing accident and after the race she come and she says sorry this is nice and i accept it, accepting this because this uh, situation must be on the race Jochen Hahn triumphs for the sixth time this season with a two second advantage over René Reinert and Steffi Halm respect for the performance of Jochen Hahn and his team very proud indeed to have had three of Echo trucks of Hahn racing and their drivers on the podium the dominance of the five times champion early in the season is, for some, quite scary. 
the result of the third race of the FIA European Track Racing Championship here. Iveco, Iveco, Iveco in the top three. Sasha Lentz is eighth, meaning he'll start from pole for the fourth race. And Jamie Anderson beats Ollie James once more in the Grammar Cup. It looked easy. You asked me before the race, Jochen, how much of a lead can you drive? I don't think a lot more. I wasn't on full attack, but there wasn't a lot missing. I tried to be careful for the second race to keep the tyres better than they were yesterday. Now we try to have a good, clean fourth race, and then after a great Slovakia ring, it's time for the Nürburgring, which is always mega. Right in the middle of the paddock is the fan village, where young and old fans can take a look at the Mercedes-Benz Pace truck and the Ford F-Max, the official truck of the ETRC. They can even take a seat. There are sessions where they can prove their skills on the race simulator or get an autograph from the drivers. Then it's time to return to the grandstand for the big showdown, race four. Sasha Lentz, the man who lives near the Nürburgring, is on pole position with his MAN. Next to him, Antonio Albafetti, another MAN driver, still waiting for his first win of the season. Yeah, I mean, I have Sasha by side, so it will be difficult. He's also very fast. But, uh, yeah, we will try. It's a good chance, so let's hope that uh, at least we have a podium in the weekend. For the last time, it's time for race action at the Slovakia ring. Lentz and Albafetti are at the front. Behind them, Lachko. Lachko drops back, though, into turn one. Kish and Halm both go ahead of him. Lachko drops to sixth, but he's on the attack. Up front, Albafetti leads the way. Jochen Hahn is eighth, taking it easy in the second race of the day, trying to bring home some points. Looking back from Norbert Kish's truck, showing the overtaking manoeuvre against former teammate Andre Kurzin, who is, after his bad luck in the first race, hanging back a little bit and perhaps just keeping out of trouble and trying to salvage some points. The double Leuven power drivers are at the front, Albafetti ahead of Lent, then it's Kish, Kurzim and Lachko. At the Slovakia ring, the racetracks have the highest average speed of the entire season, more than 130 kilometres an hour. Then drama hits Andre Kurzim, who has to retire after six laps due to an incident with Norbert Kish. No podium this time for the young German from Sven Walter's team. The order is settled after that, Everybody seems more or less content just to bank points and keep out of trouble. Antonio Albafetti is on his way to his first win of the season. Small compensation for the bad luck over the first three races of the weekend. On board with Adam Lachko. Ahead of him, the battle still rages on. Norbert Kish attacking Sasha Lentz. That leads to an investigation by the stewards, but without any luck for the Hungarian. Kish second and defending his place to the very end. At the checkered flag, Antonio Albafetti wins for the first time this season ahead of Kish and Lentz. The proud Spaniard is the winner of the 12th race of the season. Celebrations underway from his team and many others in the pit lane. <laughs> Albafetti heads to the top step of the podium. Finally, he's a race winner this year. The race results. Albafetti and Kish at the front. Jochen Hahn is seventh. It's Sasha Lentz that rounds out the top three drivers on the podium. And Jamie Anderson again is victorious in the Grammar Truck Cup. British driver Jamie Anderson celebrates his third Grammar Truck Cup victory at the Slovakia ring, but he doesn't get much closer to the leader, Ollie Janes, in the championship itself due to dropping out of the first race. 
In the championship, Jochen Hahn increases his gap over Steffi Halm. Norbert Kish is third, Adam Lachko fourth, and Antonia Albafetti drops back to fifth. After the Slovakia ring, we head to the season highlight at the Nürburgring. In the Eiffel Mountains, we'll have four more races and reach the halfway point of the championship. <laughs>